Hi everybody, and welcome to another exciting Creepy Pasta Friday. Today I have an exciting new story to share with you guys. This is from creepypasta.com, and the story is called Simply Just Love. And there's no author, so I have no one to credit for you guys. Uh, but if you know who wrote this, maybe leave it in the description down below. But I'm gonna go ahead and get started. This is not meant to scare anyone. Calling it a creepy story would be a bit of an insult, because it isn't one. This is an expression of gratitude toward a friend. A friend who was always there for me. He watched over me as I was growing up, and was the best friend any kid could have had. Even if I didn't recognize him at the time, he was always there, even though I couldn't see him, and he was always acting in my best interest, even if I couldn't understand. I like to take some time to share with our, you our story, because if you're lucky, you might have a friend like this too. I think I should let you know. I'm going to read you his first letter. In May of 2010, I bought a new computer and took my old one to the shop to have everything backed up. I had brought the new computer home and had begun restoring my files from the portable hard drive and reinstalling programs when I noticed that there was a file in the miscellaneous folder that the shop technician had created for files with no other place. It was called happybirthdaybaby.txt. Initially, I thought it was a message my mom had written for me that I'd never found, never read as intended, but I opened it and this is what I found. You might find this one day, and I'm not great at this computer stuff, but I'd watched you tinkering with this machine lately, and I think I know how to save this so that you'll find it. Seeing as it's time for me to go, I wanted to leave you this little last message. I know you never met your father, but to me, he was Colonel Marcus Andrew Stadfield, as I'm sure your mother told you. He was a good man, the one with the pride of a lion, the strength of a bear, and the heart of pure gold. Truth is, I was almost like his son long before you were born. I was second in command and served with him for three years. I watched as your mother wept when she heard the news, her belly swollen with your soon-to-be debut into this world, and I stayed with her every second of every day. That was until the day you came to this world, then my focus shifted to you. I watched as they cleaned you and handed you to your mother, and she seemed to look right at you with a knowing eye as I stood over the both of you, almost as if she had known all along that I'd be watching you. I've watched you grow, and I remember everything, even the things you don't. You always were such a happy baby. You had seemed to have inher inherited your father's sense of humor. When you were getting to be four months old, you would do just about anything to hinder your mother's attempts at changing you. Laughing all the while, you were a wild one at heart, just as you are today. Just like Marcus. When you were about six months old, we would play all the time. We had one game in particular where I would grab your toes and tickle your belly. You loved it. Though when your mother came in, I'd have to stop. And it always perplexed her as to why you'd abruptly start crying. After a while, she seemed to think you didn't like her, which is when I realized I had to back away some. When you were one year old, you seemed to develop a sixth sense for me. Although you couldn't really see me so much, or so well anymore, you knew I was there. I couldn't play with you as much as before, because I knew it would only hurt you in the long run. But I always kept guard. I knew you remembered seeing me because you had a way of testing my presence. You'd throw your toys into the corner where I stood, and then wait to see if I would play with them. Now I know you won't remember this, but once you threw a bear and a rag doll at me, and because your mother was busy in the kitchen making dinner, I kept you entertained by putting a lim on a little show. It was nothing special. I just made them dance a little. You were laughing loudly, and your mom came in to see what was so funny. But when she saw, she wasn't laughing. I bet you could mention the bear and the rag doll danced even today. And the color would run right out of her cheeks. But do me a favor, and don't. I think it would be kinder to ask if you even ever threw the toys into the corner. That isn't quite as bad of memory for her as the dancing is. Do you remember your first word? I do. It's love. Your mother made damn sure you knew just how much you were cherished by her. Every moment of every day. And she would always say, I love you, baby. 
I remember you tugged at my heartstrings with something awful once. When your mother was changing you in the bathroom this one time, you seemed to have caught my reflection in the mirror behind her. And you pointed and said, love, well, more of a love, but your mother knew. And she laughed and affirmed it. It was only, it was your only word for a time, but as I walked out of the rea reflection, you started getting restless, and I knew again that I had to be more stealthy. You were growing more and more every day now, and I couldn't afford to break my promise to your father, which is why I would have to retreat yet again. I broke the rules many times to protect you. For that promise to your father was everything to me. I remember when you were three and had mastered walking. You were a regular little scout. You could never keep still. Those little legs had opened up a whole new world to you, and you weren't shy at all about exploring it. One day, you were with your mother in the market, and a lady with a shiny purse caught your eye. You went running after her, just as another shopper was running with her trolley in front of her, coming the other way. She didn't spot you, and because you were running after the purse, you didn't see her either. Breaking the rules was not allowed, but allowing you to get hurt wasn't permittable either. By the time you noticed her, it was too late, and you fell to your bottle before you could scamper off into her trolley. Left without any other option, I sent that trolley flying into the side of a freezer. As it crashed, the woman screamed bloody murder. Uh, a man in a uniform, she screamed. You simply giggled as the crowd gathered and your mother came running. When she found you at the scene, you were safe and sound, and you pointed to the trolley that had smashed the freezer window. You know what you said to her then? Love, mommy. I was hiding by then, embarrassed to have created such a scene, though I have to admit, I was laughing on the inside. As he grew and became more aware, so did I. And I finally knew when I could and couldn't intervene. Doing too much would hurt the both of us, so I chose my moments carefully. You were a smart kid, just like your father, and most of the time knew how to handle any and every situation. If there was an option, you took it. Though I slipped up a few times as you were growing up, I do think I did well to keep an eye on you. It was just the little things to make your life a bit easier. Things you probably won't remember, like putting your piano music sheets into your bag at night, turning off your television when you fell asleep, pulling the sheets over you on the colder nights, sorting your drawers, setting your alarm clock, closing your windows and doors. You caught me doing one of two of these things a few times. And I want to take the time now to apologize for scaring you. <laughs> this one time, you were doing your homework and fell asleep at your desk. So I filled in all the answers for your math quiz. You'd made such a fuss to your mother earlier about how strict the teacher was about your homework. And I knew you knew the answers anyways. But you suspected more than ever when you woke up and found the whole half a sheet you'd left incomplete was done. You were older and had forgotten that we were friends. Things you saw in the media about ghosts scared you, and you had every right to be afraid. I just wanted to say I'm sorry. I never meant to make you cry. If I had only ever taken a little extra care, you'd never have known. I just wanted to keep you safe and happy. As you matured, you began to take form as a little lady, and as such, you began to know the evil of men. Though you had your wits about you, you were always taking stupid risks, and watching over you became a little more of a worry for me. Gradually, I had to expose myself more and more. Most memorably, the night the no-good boy you brought home started putting the moves on you. Your mother was at work. He was only after one thing, and although I know it wasn't my place to choose for you, you were still only a baby girl, just 15 years old. As he got on top of you and started undressing you, took off his top and began whispering those sweet nothings, your face said it all. You were scared. And when you told him to stop, and he wouldn't. And when you pushed him away... And he got angry when he struck you and finally tried to put his hand up your skirt and all the evil i kept inside of me broke free at that moment and was something i couldn't control my rage boiled over as i began to growl the lights flickering the tv volume raising the doors and windows crashing open and shut the keys on your piano began to rattle with your father's roar i yelled get out of the house boy he ran out of that room and you tried to follow but i slammed that door in your face and wouldn't let you handle and wouldn't let the handle go until your mother pulled into the driveway. I'm so sorry, kid. That whole thing traumatized you for a while. You became more frightened of me than ever, having such an experience. I knew from then on, in spite of how much I loved you, we could never be friends, not even after what I had done.
Some nights, you used to sit awake, late into the evening, watching for me, and I had to sit in the darkest corner, looking right back at you, unable to reassure you that I wasn't there to cause you harm. You used to scream, I hate you, get out, leave me alone, and just as you used to do as a toddler, you would throw things into my corner, only a set of toys for me to play with, this time it was heavy books, CD cases, anything you get your hands on to get me to move. You used to sit in your bed, watching the corner. I always felt terrible about what I did. I'd almost broken that promise to your father, but more importantly, I'd almost broken the personal promise I'd made to you. It was like that until the night you tried to make peace with me. The night you sat up in your bed and you said, If you're here, I'm sorry. You only trying to stop him. I wanted to say something, but I couldn't. Even as you shuffled around nervously and called, You're here, right? Could you show me a sign? I wanted so badly to show you something, anything, I was there, to show I was there, and then I heard that, but feared that you would lose it if I did. I kept silent and just nodded in that dark corner where you couldn't see me. You have to know, I was never mad at you. You were just a little girl, and that little prick tipped me over the edge. Promise me you'll never do anything like that again, won't you? It's your 18th birthday today, which is exactly why I'm writing this to you. I want to wish you a happy birthday. I'm sure your dad's getting sick of keeping that bar stool open for me. Live a good life. Try not to forget about me. I know you turned out great. Your father would be so proud of you. This letter is my present to you. And don't you worry about the spooky corner anymore. My final order is complete. I don't know about you, but I think this trooper deserves a drink. You sure were a handful. If you find this one day, try calling out to me. Take care. Be safe and live a happy life of love, Lieutenant Ashley Gilcrest. P.S. If you call out my name, call me what you used to call me as a kid. That always got me to come running. I was gobsmacked when I read this letter. Everything finally made sense. All the things that happened when I was growing up. I'd always thought that I was seeing things until that one day my ex-boyfriend almost raped me. I'll be sure to admit that I was scared of him, but I didn't understand what he was, why he was there, or what he was after, but now I see that I had it all wrong. A few days after reading the letter, I asked my mom a few questions about the spooky things that had happened when I was growing up. She was very nonchalant about the whole thing, until I mentioned what happened in the market. There she stood, stopped cleaning, set down her cloth, and turned to me and smiled. You always had a guardian angel watching over you, honey. I don't know if it was your father or not, but who or whatever it was... It made sure nothing bad ever really happened to you. As she turned around and began cleaning the dishes, she asked, So I guess you meant it then, right? Your spirit friend? Not exactly. He left something for me. I went upstairs, brought my laptop down, and showed her the letter on my computer. My mother was crying by the time she finished, and she told me all about my dad's friend. He was a kind boy. Mark brought him home one evening to meet me, and he had certain things about him. The man was as loyal as a dog to your father. He had a love and respect for him that came, that even I was intimidated by at times. When he came to our home on leave, Marcus nearly had to order him to make himself at home, and he even had to be asked to take off his uniform. He looked up to Marcus almost like a boy looks up to his father. I don't really know his background, but I remember your father telling me that he was a good drinking partner, a fine soldier, and an invaluable friend. She took a deep breath and choked back a few tears before continuing on. They found that poor boy and your father all alone in a building that had been overrun by the enemy. They had been out on recon, and their team got separated when they came under fire. The rest of the boys on your father's team survived, but those two weren't so lucky. The way they found them was peculiar. She swallowed heavily, looking me right in the eye, and said, The boy was found on top of your father, riddled with bullets. He was shielding him right up until the moment he died. He could have gotten away, but he refused to leave your father's side. With that, we both burst into tears. Love. That's exactly what he was. He was a guardian. I never had any reason to be afraid of him, and I had given anything just to tell him I was sorry and that I loved him back. I had no right to have done all of those terrible things I did to him at the end. I realized, and I realized that he loved my father so much that even death could keep him from what he'd promised he'd mentioned in the letter. When I asked what the promise was, my mother looked at me with tears in her eyes and said, it was made in this very house where they were setting up your room. It was just, no matter what happens, promise me you'll watch over my daughter.
And that is the end of our creepy pasta Friday. It's kind of a sweet story, don't you think? Kind of wish I had a guardian angel ghost. Or maybe I do, and I just don't notice it. Maybe you do have one sitting in the dark corner of your room right now. If you like this story, let me know down below. And if you have one you'd like to see me read next, leave me a comment about it. And we'll see you guys all next time. Bye, everybody!